the same time. Of course, it always was going off into the gutter, and I forgot the words, but we did hundreds of times, and I presume they l used what they could. And you started with Jarvis Cocker and Tom Jones and other hip icons of our time? Yes, apparently they rang me up and said, would I like to go to the Haymarket, whether they thought I would come from America to the Haymarket and go back. I don't know, but they said that Georgie Best would be there. That was the lure. <laughs> and was that alluring to you, the <laughs> idea of meeting Georgie Best? Not really. <laughs> now, you are 89 years old, if you don't think indelic it indelicate of me to mention it. I'm 87. Oh, gosh, I have to tear up my notes in that case. Um, you're 87 years old. You say one of the reasons you have kept so young, hale and hearty is because you do not work. That's right. Never work. Not only is the getting up at half past seven in order to go out at half past eight in order to arrive at the office at half past nine too much for anybody, but there's the look of resentment which settles onto your face and makes you look old. You're also known, along with Lester Piggott, as the housewife's favourite because you have said, damn and blast your housework. That's right. Yes, I went to America and I was scorned by the gay community because they thought I was somebody who went throughout the length and breadth of the land hiring spaces in which to deliver a manifesto. And I said, I myself am hired and as far as I know, my function is to sell theater scenes. And as you know, a theater goer throughout the world is a middle-class, middle-aged woman with a broken heart. Ah, so Men never go to the theatre, except was... because their wives say, of course you're coming, who's going to drive the car? <laughs> but what did you say that so entranced this middle-aged woman with a broken heart? What was it that you said about housework? Well, I said if she didn't do the housework, the dirt didn't get any worse after four years. I have met someone who actually visited your flat in London and she said that if you moved a pot from one side of the table to another, an enormous agglomeration of dust threatened to engulf you. That's right. Never move anything. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you, I mean, have you adhered to this maxim of never cleaning anything? Or? That's right. In, in, in New York, I will be 112 before I've got my room to the same state of degradation as my room in London because I was 41 years in one room there. You say you feel like an American. Oh, yes. I'm an American in my heart. Why? Ever, ever since I went to the movies, my mother took me to the movies, silent movies, and in a spirit of ostentatious condescension, she said that movies were for servant girls. People with any taste went to the theatre. But when I saw the pictures of New York, I began to gibber and twitch. And she said that they were greatly exaggerated. Nothing that went on on the screen was like real life. And she was wrong, because everyone who comes from England to New York and comes back again says one thing first. It's more like the movies than you'd ever dream. <laughs> Your life has made already an amazing movie, but I bet the sequel's going to be even more sensational. Quentin Crisp, thank you very much. The book is called Resident Alien, the New York Journals. It's extraordinary. So are you. Thank you so much. And now time for the final Big Breakfast News and weather.